Welcome back everybody. This is another video in our series of videos about the early settlement of Australia. In this video we're going to look at changes in way of life for the convicts. So how different was life for convicts when they arrived in Australia and what did they really experience uh, working in Australia as convicts. The main role for convicts was to supply the labour force for the colonies. Uh, convicts were to provide the workers needed to build the Australian colony. So when they arrived there was nothing and of course the convicts needed to build the New South Wales colony. Uh, most were assigned to work for the government and convicts with skills such as carpenters, blacksmiths, builders, bakers and farmers were highly sought after because they needed these these skills to help build and feed the settlement. And those who could read or write might work as clerks. So if you could read and write and you were a convict, you probably had it better off than those who couldn't because you wouldn't be doing back-breaking labour, you'd be working in an office as a clerk. On screen now you can see the uniform of a convict. So it was a black and yellow jacket. It was made out of wool and as you can imagine in the Australian summer that probably was very uncomfortable for convicts. They were required to wear this jacket at all time because it identified them to the people around them as convicts and so when it became very hot you can imagine that it was very uncomfortable to wear this. You can also imagine that it was quite smelly and dirty because they wouldn't have been able to wash them very often either. As you can imagine in a group of convicted criminals there are those that badly behaved and those who behaved badly worked in gangs who constructed roads and buildings, cleared forests or quarried stone. So this is very heavy, heavy manual labour and the work was very hard. So it was a punishment to have to do any of these jobs. Furthermore, convicts who misbehaved on the journey over, so from on the ship from England to Australia, were sent to secondary punishment in pl places such as Port Arthur where the conditions were terrible. So... If you decided to behave badly on the ship, you received another punishment on top of your transportation punishment that you were being sent for and sent to places where conditions were awful and you had a horrible experience. There are a small percentage of workers who were not assigned to the government and not required by the government, so they were assigned to work for free settlers. Now, this could be extremely lucky because they may have treated them nicely and almost like one of the family or they may have treated them worse than they treated their own animals so it was really a lucky dip if you were an assigned convict. Women who were not needed by the government and were not uh, assigned to a settler were sent to work in female factories where they worked on tasks such as cleaning and spinning wool. Now a female factory was probably not a nice place to end up and it didn't matter uh, if you were pregnant or if you were ill or anything like that, they all ended up in female factories if they were unassigned. So food and accommodations were very poor. There was leaky roofs and the women lived on site as well and there was very little food. There was lice, there was disease. And so the, ending up in a female factory was not a nice place to end up. Now, as most of the women who were in the female factories were single, uh, free settler men could visit the female factories and then they could select women to be servants, housekeepers uh, or even wives or sometimes even mistresses. Similarly to convicts who are assigned to free settlers, this was a bit of a lucky dip. The men could treat you really well or they could treat you worse than they treated your own, their own animals. So it was a bit of a lucky dip if you ended up with a nice man or a man that treated you horribly. In 1801, there was a system that was set up to allow con convicts to work to um, a better life in Australia, and this is called the ticket of leave system, and it allowed well-behaved convicts to work for wages. So this system was considered to be a ticket to freedom because they were able to build up wages that they could set up their own farm or their own home once they had served their sentence but this could also be lost if they behave badly. So if you're on the ticket of leave system and you did something wrong, those privileges could be revoked. And then there was also another group of people who were convicts that received pardons or served their full sentence. They were known as emancipists and they were 
free settlers from that time on and they were allowed to purchase property and develop their own home here in Australia. So we can see what we've discussed before, that life for a convict could be good. They could be treated well if they received uh, assignment to a nice family or they worked hard and they could learn a skill along the way. And some were even given pardons or land, grant, land grants for good behaviour. However, convict life could be bad um, if you chose to misbehave. You experienced hardship, so working in hard conditions, beatings, lashings and also isolation. Because convict life could be bad, there were people that tried to escape, but the penalties for escaping were harsh. So those who were recaptured received 500 lashes, and if they survived those 500 lashes, put in leg irons for the rest of their sentence. Those who escaped were called bolters, and because they didn't really have an understanding of the old geography, they escaped to the bush and most tried to walk to China. Uh, some also turned to bushranging, but most were recaptured, returned voluntarily or died of starvation because they didn't know how to cope with the harsh conditions in the Australian bush. As briefly mentioned earlier, there was a lot of punishment in the convict colonies and the main purpose was to act as a deterrent for bad behaviour, so to stop people wanting to continue with further bad behaviour and flogging was the most common. Solitary confinement was used less, but it was also just as feared, so you'd be shut in a room for an extended period of time. Uh, if you committed a crime that was really bad, you could be hanged. And of course there are other punishments such as beating um, and being put in leg irons as well. Women tended to receive different punishments, and they were usually put into solitary confinement and had their heads shaved. The head shaving was a visual reminder to all of the other women that were working around them that they should not behave badly or they'll receive similar punishment. This is a diary from somebody who was living in a convict settlement in Australia. So this is known as a primary source because it's from the time. You can see that it's dated 1823 here and it's an illustration of how our floggings would have taken place. So you can see that there are uh, British government workers and then there's the man being flogged in front of you. You can see that it's quite a vicious process and it causes a lot of damage to the person. It's also sort of taking place in a public area where other people would be able to watch and so that is a reminder to other people that this could happen to them if they chose to behave badly also. A special person in this time period is Governor Macquarie he was the person that did the most for the convicts and he was Governor of New South Wales from 1810 to 1821. Now most free settlers, they looked down on the convicts so they considered them to be below them and once they com completed their sentence they still looked down on them because they were convicts. But Governor Macquarie believed that convicts who had completed their sentences and paid for their bad behaviour should be treated like anyone else. And so during his governorship, he uh, issued 366 pardons, 1,365 conditional pardons and 2,139 tickets of leave. Now, he did this because he did believe that they should be treated as, any, as anyone else, but he also thought that they would help the colony to become prosperous and self-sufficient. He followed this idea through so much that he actually appointed a convict named Francis Greenway to help him transfer the Sydney settlement into a town. Before he was sentenced to 14 years transportation for forging documents, Francis Greenway had actually been an architect in England and Macquarie gave him a ticket of leave and he went on to design several beautiful stone buildings that are still standing in Sydney today. So you can see that Governor Macquarie not only just believed that convicts should be, uh, who finished their sentence should be treated as equal but he actually went through and did treat them as equal and he recognised the benefit of this and actually employed a convict to help him transform, this, transform the Sydney settlement. So most people who had been transported to Australia had a tough life back home. They were probably uh, unemployed or quite poor. They probably didn't have a lot of skills. So once they finished their sentence in Australia, they actually had a lot of new opportunities open to them and a lot of them took advantage of that. 
Some turned to farming, shipping and general trade, so they learned a lot about these um, these skills when they were working as a convict. Um, and this would have been impossible for them to do back in Britain because they wouldn't have been able to learn the skills or receive the materials necessary to complete these jobs. And because people were able to create a better life for themselves after they finished their sentence. The number of freed convicts who wanted to return home dropped dramatically. So I hope that you can see from this video that the experience of convicts was somewhat mixed. Those who behaved badly had it really, really tough. There was harsh punish punishments. And so those who chose to behave in a way that was not acceptable would have had a terrible experience. However, those who chose to make the most of the opportunity and worked really hard could have taken advantage of the ticket of leave system and hopefully become an emancipist. And those systems were put in place because the government recognised the advantage and the benefit of using convicts after their sentence were up to help develop Australia and build it into more than a colony.